Hi, George. Hey, how are you? How's it going? Yeah, good, thank you. How about you? Yeah, I can't, can't complain. It's been almost a year since uh, we started doing these, by the way. The, the oh, company. really? Since... Wow. I mean, it's two more months, but still, it almost. Yeah, nearly. <laughs> Are we going to have a, a special episode? Special yeah, I meeting? Guess we, should. <laughs> <laughs> we should make something. <laughs> Everybody needs to connect with uh, like a glass of champagne, and we all go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on the cameras to is a proof of champagne instead yep. of proof of. <laughs> Hi, right, I'll be. <laughs> I know. Hi. Hi. Um... Uh, uh, Nan, you're asking if everybody's suddenly mute. I, I don't know. It was just like coincidence. We were just joking about. Uh, so, uh, it it just happened to that uh, <laughs> we went mute. Right, right. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I couldn't hear anything. So I thought, is there a problem with my audio system or right. like did everyone actually <laughs> done quiet? Okay. No, no, it just it just happens. <laughs> All right, I think we can get started. Um, so welcome to August third, two thousand twenty-three, Aries V six community call. Uh, Hyperledger antitrust policy notice is in effect. Uh, displayed on the screen and uh, well I guess we can just get uh, right into it so uh, I prepared um, like uh, some agenda do you guys uh, anyone has any any item you would like to add here anything you want to discuss that's not already on the list not from me All right, so um, I think that's really good. Um, so um, yeah, we can start with the mentorship as usual. And we have a Nyan on the call. Uh, become our usual, becoming our usual visitor. As uh, it's great to have you here. Nyan, would you like to give uh, a brief update, like you usually do, about uh, what you've been up to and how you're progressing? Um, yeah, sure. I'll give a small update. So this week, uh, what, I, what I had decided is to shift from working on the test server to actually getting and digging inside the ADS V6 code. So uh, the previous week we had initialized, uh, we had basically taken some code and initialized uh, ADS v6 as a dependency on the server. So this week, I wanted to try to actually initialize a wallet and uh, start working with vcx. So I did hit some roadblocks when I'm trying to initialize the wallet. Uh, I didn't know exactly what wallet config to use. So I saw that the initialization 
full function. It requires some parameters like wallet config, indie config, and stuff like that. So I don't uh, actually know what to use there. So that is kind of postponed a bit now. So uh, while looking into the solutions for this, I just took a look through the V6 server and I found George's uh, simple uh, relay. So in ADS V6 server, there's a tools directory and in that there's a simple message relay. Uh, I think it was PR just two weeks ago. So I took a look through that and yes uh, it, it seems to be an http mediator sort of thing uh, yeah uh, i thought then maybe we'll have uh, hb6 related stuff but it is also based on http so i decided that i can maybe like take, take inspiration from that i'm thinking of wrapping the mediator that I'm uh, the test mediator that I'm writing into a usable form so that it can act as a demoable thing. So the difference between hello between that really in the repository now. Uh, sorry, uh, is, 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 is it just me uh, uh, having protocol connection issues, or is there, uh, like it uses the same endpoints that are there in the pickup protocol docs? So I think this would be a good demo for the mediator. And the next steps are, are to uh, see how the wallet is created in maybe ASV6 tests. So if uh, you could. Suggest some particular test which I can take a look at for generating the wallet. Then yeah, that will speed things up. Yeah, that's that's my current status till now. So this week the goal is to wrap up the uh, test mediator into a demoable form and to get started with creating a wallet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's about. It. Uh, R right, right. It, it, was, sure. it was it was a bit difficult. Uh, uh, I, to... I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you, but it's kind of clattery. Uh, I I couldn't hear. It, it, there was lots of uh, words being dropped from uh, on my side. George, you're saying you exp experiencing the same issue? Yeah, same. Um, I think uh, I think also the audio is coming through pretty late. Um, because Nayan was sending those messages uh, as they were still talking. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. It feels like uh, uh, it feels like uh, there's something wrong, not just with uh, Nayan's connection, but even something maybe with, with Zoom. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Anyway, sorry, Nayan. I, I, yeah, it was it was hard to understand actually uh, fully, but I get it that like you were taking a look. Uh, Trying to get inspired how to initialize the wallet and uh, uh, yeah, trying to like get it uh, get it up and running. So yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's uh, surely that's a that's a good. Uh, you gotta start somewhere. So 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 sorry. M maybe you said this, but have you actually managed to create a wallet in the end, or are you still uh, uh, playing with that? No. So no, I haven't managed to get the wallet created uh, because. It asks for indie config and wallet config and mm. all those configurations, which yeah. I don't currently know what uh -huh. to actually give it. So yeah, like I'm stuck on that part. Right, uh, right. So, so just to maybe so, a, a note so right, there. Uh, so in summary, I'll just summarize what I had said in the last yeah. minute. Okay, so in summary, I'm trying to wrap up the test mediator into a demo demoable form so that, uh, you know, it can act as a 
uh, HTTP endpoint and you can send it pick up messages and it'll respond. So it'll be a, a pick up protocol conforming demo mediator, which doesn't work on uh, ADs messages, but over HTTP basically. Yeah, so that's right. Uh, the first part I intend to finish this week. Mm -hmm. And the second part is to do this. That is create the wallet. For that, I'm thinking of looking into the tests. But yes, uh, if Yeah, right. There was some drop towards the end, but I just uh, I, I think we got most of it. And uh, I just wanted to note that uh, you can have a look at Aries VCX uh, slash test slash MySQL wallet test. And there's essentially the kind of the config uh, you would use to initialize the, the wallet with uh, you know, MySQL imp wallet implementation. Um, it's using some builder pattern here. So you don't exactly see the JSON, but perhaps if you run this test and just uh, put a, some sort of console log here and print, you know, print out this uh, config wallet in its final form, you will see the whole JSON kind of document uh, for the, the, the configuration document. So you can have a look at that. All right, uh, let's move on. Uh, so uh, we don't have swap now. Um, so I guess we we just uh, sk skip over this one. Maybe maybe George, uh, I know that there's the PR open from swap now. Is, is it uh, soon to be merged or what's the state of, of that currently? Do you know? Um, yeah, the, the goal is to have that PR ready uh, before next Monday mm -hmm. is, is the goal. Um, yeah. Right, right. All right. Uh, okay. And then moving on to our kind of uh, usual uh, topics. Uh, so we had a 0571 release, which uh, the main main reason for this release was uh, because we found that uh, the last release 0570 was faulty for, Libby, for iOS and Android uh, builds. It would uh, crash in runtime upon like basic calling a basic functions very early on, so this should fix the problem. Um, and there was also squashed in some some refactoring and some like mi minor things. But the main 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 uh, main addition here was the the fix for the iOS and 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 Java Android. Um, yeah, and then uh, and then we've also done within that release uh, refactoring of uh, features, so uh, you can again run uh, uh, based on uh, George's last week remark that we kind of had this uh, this uh, uh, reverted some behavior and it was impossible to compile with no default features. We we fix this and George, you are unmuted. Would you like to uh, comment something on this? Oh, sorry, I just left myself unmuted. Um, ah, it's no all good. I, ju I just <laughs> thought you are getting ready to say something. No, uh, no, no. Right. Yeah. So, so this has been uh, merged. Um, it also has like some 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 other refactoring included in terms of features to make it a bit easier to work with and even understand. Um, yeah, and then we have a whole bunch of things in progress. Uh, so, uh, did exchange protocol, it's a long story, but, uh, good stuff is coming out of it. Uh, there is like, uh, a number of kind of for now, uh, PRs in a draft state. I'm not sure, uh, we don't have Mira on the call, so I'm not sure what is needed for these things to be, uh, like to be merged, to, to, to transition into ready state uh, but i suppose uh, not 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 too much uh, yeah and then the exchange protocol it's in progress um it's kind of 
relates, I guess, a lot uh, to to another task we are doing in parallel with the prototyping the new state mission approach. So I know that Miro is not like fully satisfied with how the how the how the uh, the did exchange protocol looks like right now, and uh, I think that perhaps if we combine the outcomes of the 915, the new state mission approach, and and the kind of uh, uh, the, the implementation work uh, done in uh, Miro's uh, branch, then uh, something really nice can come out of it. Uh, well, and then in progress, uh, we have also removal of VDR, VDR tools, ledger client in favor of NDVDR. That's close to, I, I suppose, close to being ready for uh, review. I'm still doing like some final touches. I'm, I'm, I'm testing in like on our intern with our internal services, uh, getting some feedback out of it and, and then kind of, uh, iterating on that work with some like further fixes and improvements based on my findings. So this is almost ready. It removes the entire uh, pool and ledger portion of the code from VDR tools. Um, yeah, but uh, in general, it works good. I found that in the VDR is a bit slower than the, the original VD, uh, VDR tools implementation. I'm not exactly sure why, but uh, we can we can investigate it further. Nevertheless, uh, in the VDR is where the community is and where the support is. So it's uh, still, if, even though the performance seems a, a bit slower, I think it's still uh, uh, definitely the, the right move uh, forward. Uh, any, any comments on this one? Um. Uh, as you're as you're removing parts of VDR tools, um, are you sort of updating any of the cargo tomals as well to like remove extra dependencies that VDR tools quite have or might have, or, or are you sort of removing like whole crates from VDR tools at a time? Right. So for now, I just deleted all of the code, uh, hmm. and I yeah, that's a good. Point actually, I didn't remove the dependencies. That's that's a good point, and it, it should be possible because I mean, you no longer need zero MQ stuff. Mm. Although that might be kind of the only dependency. Uh, I'm not sure there's any more. But nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, uh, I know that right now, uh, the the way that the Cargo Tomo looks like in Aries VCX. Uh, there's some improvements to be done here hmm. because what was it? Um, oh yeah, right. Uh, somehow indirectly, currently we are bringing in the VDR tools. I think that was there was uh, some some conversation that we had together, George, in that feature yeah. bar, right? Yeah, yeah. It's in core. We're bringing in uh uh like the error types from indie api types or something yeah, like that yeah yeah so i think we can just kind of extract out those like it, it's just small it's just tiny portion of vdr tools we are needing there uh i think so we can just kind of extract it out and minimize the the, the dependency impact from from that so mm -hmm. then if you are using the module fully modular modular configuration of Aries VCX, then you wouldn't have to carry all the baggage from VDR tools. That's yeah, good. that's good. So I, I started working on it like uh, locally, uh, uh, but uh, it, it just in infancy as I'm still trying to finish this one off first, but uh, that, that will follow up. Cool. Um, yeah, and well, uh, then, um, uh, I'll leave uh, I'll leave comments about this one towards the end. Uh, just want to know that I restored this ancient PR, uh, removing open SSL dependency. I, I found yesterday both both of you guys been on commenting on this throughout the year, uh, kind of checking in what's happening with this. 
and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think we can. This seems like it's passing, so probably can get this merged and get rid of the open SSL dependency here. Um, well, and lastly, uh, since we fixed the kind of feature setup in a, even the last week, I think we can now bring back the uh, the migration for Node.js, which was running to some dependency issues with VDR tools. And so one more uh, item here. So the uh, we have like uh, this prototyping ongoing for quite a while. It's uh, it's been <laughs> It's been a rather journey, lots of comments, all discussions and calls, but uh, I believe we are like uh, reaching somewhere further. So uh, this was my last comment here. Uh, basically, I, I, like, I think I'm, I, I like it in general. It just one thing I'm reserved towards is the, the loading the, of the state machines. And that was kind of my last remark here. And uh, I know Bogdan. What's what's your latest take on this? What's your thoughts? Share with us. That we're not even close to anything ready. Um, yeah, I, I saw the the comment you left. Honestly, I, I don't really uh, follow that well. So removing the get method from this the the interface kind of makes it somewhat useless. You are right about the. I, I try to kind of do a, a demo, kind of have a test that will just start the connection between two parties and can have them communicate with each other. Um, and indeed, there is a problem with the interface as it is right now. Uh, and I guess that was the initial idea with having the extra method for resolving the ID somehow. Um, but anyway, taking it step by step, maybe commenting on this here. I didn't comment yet because I'm on the PR because I thought I was expecting that we're probably going to be talking here. So, um, yeah, the the naming of the associated type is just a name. It's probably not great, uh, but yeah, by the I was thinking mainly about just something that you can use to um, deterministically pull out the state machine out of your database or storage. Um, then I don't know about these um, points that you made, like the efficiency and concern, especially about having, if you're using a thread ID and you're having the state machine ID separately, okay, you would have to do a, some update join, but even if you don't use the interface, you would still have to do that. And I'm not really worried about an update join uh, in terms of databases. They should be good at that kind of stuff. That's what they were made for. Um, then, I also don't know about the um, the generality. Yeah, it's an interface that we use, so I don't necessarily even think they that consumers would care as much about how we use it. Like they can go through the code if they're really interested in that. Um, the indirection. Um, I mean, no, no, no. So, so can I can I stop you here? Yeah, for, uh, uh, like. The users will need to implement the traits, right? right. The implementation of traits depends how they're gonna be using the handler, and they it, it might be like a bit too much. What do you mean by how they're gonna be using the handler? Though? Yeah, because because what you decide, what you implement here, mm -hmm. depends on what you are intent to. Let me open this up. Uh, uh, let's see, for example, the, like some sort of handler. Uh, this is something new, don't worry about that. Here's the, okay, handler response, right? Handler response. Okay. So, so, and you pass the SMID. So when you're implementing the, the storage implementation, the get and, the, and, and these puts and whatnot, then like what ID is going to be depends what you decide to, you know, what you decided to be when you are calling the handler function. I don't know, it's right. because it's but propagated. The to the call both of these. So they decide, I don't see a problem with that. Like, okay, they decide 
what they call the handlers with, which is perfectly normal. It's in their control, basically. And then they define the interface based on that as well, which again is in their control. How is that? I don't really see how that's a problem. I, I, I don't know. It seems like uh, you just have to. You, you're sounds, saying that it's complicated it, to understand that when you define the interface and you set the associated type to something to kind of make the connection that the associated type that you set there is the one that you're going to be using in the handlers. I, I know, like this level of indirection. Like you're when you want to explain how to implement this, you need to refer to like. You know, when you, you need to tell the level, developer, like, you know, the ID is going to be what you call some another function elsewhere in the code base with. Uh, I find it like strange, you know, because they. I don't, honestly, but I actually find it pretty straightforward. I mean, obviously, it might require some comments just to get them to understand what's the interface actually used for maybe some more explanations um but yeah it has an associated type and you use that as a as a function argument in the handlers i don't know to me to me it seems so uh, maybe not the most intuitive thing ever but it definitely doesn't seem like something that's very hard to track or to call it some sort of um cognitive indirection all right. Well, I know I, I find it, right? so we can agree to disagree uh, to Fair a lot. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. Well, you wanted to kind of address this point, so you went through general. Yeah. So you know, inconsistency you one. Uh, so you're saying that developers might have multiple implementations for these traits, each with a different strategy, and that will get confusing for them. <laughs> so you're basically saying that the code that they write will be confusing for them. No, 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 because like sometimes you might want to get, uh, sometimes you, um, I, I don't know exact situation right now. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how often it's gonna be happening, but apparently it's the kind of flexible, since we are not defining what this actually is, that's like what we are trying to offer developers, this like uh, versatility and generality, mm -hmm. like it could be anything. And, and presumably like, in different like i don't know maybe for different message types or whatnot maybe sometimes you want to call it with um with a thread id and sometimes you want to uh you know look it up based on the some sort of primary key then you need to have like two implementations uh why your storage why couldn't you use the id as an enum instead like by all means, you can have two implementations of the storage, but you okay. might as well Fair have enough. the idea being uh, an enum or something like that, and kind yeah. of act on that. All right. Well, then, mm, yeah, it then ends up being, have like uh, one implementation, but we'll have like two. I don't know. Let's say two or X kind of sub variants under underneath that hidden. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. Like I find it like a lot of gymnastics for. I really don't see value actually in it. Like why, you know, the, the user can just, just get it, you know, just, just get the state machine on their own, pass it in there. And they don't have to like wonder about like what the ID is and like um, do all these like, I don't know, different, different variants, you know, different prepare for like uh, this, I don't know, enums, the different variants of what the, that ID. The thing is that even if you take out the get method, Patrick, you're still mm -hmm. stuck with the other two and they still have to kind of function the same way. No, Just that now you have somewhat of an inconsistency between, like you, you can actually end up with some inconsistency between what um, signature get will have and what it will use in contrast to what the other methods in the tray will use. Because I, I think you're right. Like if you take out, the, if you remove the get from the trait and just leave it to the users to pull out the state machines and just pass it, to, pass them to the handlers. Okay, it's technically from a point of view, we're more interested, like the main goal of this was to kind of abstract over working with the return type of the state machines, not necessarily pulling out the state machines mm -hmm. themselves. But you're still stuck with the other side of the, of the story so well i don't think so because when you when you def once you do this you know, once you pass in the state machine 
uh, and, and you are not doing the get, then you can degeneralize uh, this uh, ID parameter. And you can simply say, be, because under assumption that developers typically, when they store data and state machines, they typically assign this record some sort of ID. I mean, it's any database, like you always have some sort of ID. And so then for the put methods, since you already have the state machine, for sure you also have the ID of that state machine, not, not message ID, uh, not thread ID, not anything else, just some sort of like primary key, mm -hmm. which identifies that record. And then right. you can just say like, hey, when you are implementing the put method, you know, the ID parameter, it's the primary ID of the storage. You, and it's that simple. Like, you don't have to explain them that it can be this or that. It's just the ID. And they just have to, in order to store the, you know, the new version of the state machine, they just look it up based on that key, whether it's like name of a file or primary key on SQL, you know, some, something like that. Uh, it's it's a lot easier. Yeah, but the problem that I see with that is that it can cause inconsistencies, especially if we take the example that you've been pointing out about people starting out with a thread ID, and based on that, they want to look in the database and retrieve a state machine, for instance. So, but now they don't have the thread ID like directly associated with the state machine. The thread ID might be associated with the state machine ID, and that state machine ID can give you the the state machine itself. Then, so. You kind of need to use that thread ID, maybe do a join, get the state machine, JSON, deserialize mm -hmm. it, whatever, everything's cool. But then if you separate, if you split the interface or you take the retrieval part out of it, then, okay, they do the get outside where they might do other stuff. For instance, mm -hmm. they start out with a thread ID and then they end up with a state machine ID, you know, that they use to retrieve the state machine. Mm -hmm. But then when they, when we have to put the, state machines back using the interface, then if they use the state machine ID, it might be possible that the thread ID, that some operations would have to happen on the thread ID as well to maybe link them together again or something like that, especially for like new state machines that we would create. So then that operation is either left out entirely or awkwardly put in there um, because it wouldn't be consistent with kind of the, I don't know, um, it, it doesn't necessarily make that much sense in terms of um, the, the arguments, the function signatures anymore, because if you're using the state machine ID as your associated type, then that's, you all, that's all you kind of have to work with. Um, whereas if maybe we rename that associated type and kind of have, I think I even did, I called it state machine info or something like that. But um, if it's basically more like just an arbitrary type, arbitrary type that you use to uh, deterministically select a, a state machine or deterministically insert a state machine, then it can be a collection of things. And that gives you more room to approach this however it's necessary and however you need to. So, so the concern, so your concern is that, like, when you, that, that, that it will cause that the, like, uh, the loading and storing. Of the yeah, I think that taking the get out is practically oh. more confusing than, than letting it in, or than, than that uh, associated type. I mean, associated that, type can still stay because, like, the ID may, somebody might use, like, some sort of, I don't know, type to you ID and somebody string, whatever. I'm I'm fine with the associated type, but rather just the, you know, the definition of what it actually right. is. And well, so so if I understand, if I'm following our concern is that when you remove the get, then uh, you kind of have the you kind of you might end up with having the fetching and storing in behaving different sides of the code different parts of the code base that it's kind of not together stick together or or maybe i didn't fully fully get yeah so when you when you do a get for instance you might have to get that thread id and do a join to get the state machine mm -hmm. um, 
because you need to work with that state machine ID. But then it's not intuitive if the get is not in the same interface and you just have the put operations. It's not intuitive that the associated type is really meant to also incorporate that thread ID, which you might have to work with. But, but put... why would it incorporate? Why would the put incorporate thread ID? It, uh, what if you create a new state? Or... What if it's the start of a protocol? You just got a connection request or something or proof presentation or credential well, offer it, or whatever it, it, if it's you have to create a state machine or we create a state machine and then um you basically have to also link all these pieces together in some organized manner like the state machine id to the thread id and this is a new state machine you don't have anything in your database about it up until now so you kind of have to set things well, right okay so the, the, if we in the case database. when you are creating new state machine like accept invitation okay let me let me let me think about second yeah so you create it and you are not passing it in in my model you wouldn't be passing the id you wouldn't be pass yeah and, and you don't have the get operation uh but you are doing put right so um i don't know for that kind of cases you just need to let the caller know um you would have to ask the caller to generate the id for you but yeah basically specify right. you would the, okay so in that case i would suggest that you would pass in the id and again it will be not like some sort of arbitrary like generic ID it will be just the primary key for what it is what it means in your storage and it would get stored under that ID so as far as you get okay from that transition and the invitation was accepted then you know like uh, the, the the handler has created a new record for you instead of updating the existing one because yeah as you said it, it you know i i from i i understand that the, you know the, the main value of this uh why we deal with this storage and these interfaces is to shield the shield the user away from uh from those transition results just kind of store it for him and he only needs to deal with like oh uh, like simpler uh return types from the function and the fact that he has to load the state machine on his own or or maybe he just keeps it in the memory or would not like we don't care where he keeps it um but we do care well, That's yeah, we, have the we don't care where it's coming from, but <laughs> if it's coming from somewhere, it's probably going to go into in the same place. So I, I'd say we kind of care a bit. But yeah, I, I guess uh, you kind of came to the same conclusion about the fact that um, we we need to have the ability to uh, kind of generate the ID on demand. So my that might need uh, its own interface in some fashion. I don't know. But yeah, ultimately, um, you cannot ask for the user to give you a, an ID for the state machine in the in the handler. It's just weird. Like, hey, I'm going to process this invitation. I'm going to generate a connection request for you. Uh, just in case that succeeds, how about you give me an ID that I can use to store it with? Or you can um, some sort of ID generator and then let him know exactly. Yeah, office. that would be yes, that would be better. Um, I don't really know exactly how that works. That's basically why where I got stuck with the um, the example the, the example test. Um, and yeah, it just occurred to me why we had that resolve ID function in the interface previously. But mm. anyway. Um, that also kind of deserves its own organized manner of dealing with this uh, because I'm not sure exactly how it should look like or what it should look like and what it what arguments it should be processing. Um, and it's also a matter of um, 
kind of dealing with things in the sense that to kind of determine the state machine and its ID, whatever you might have to um, kind of process the message in some manner, or maybe particularly the thread. But the, it, be it begs the question of what exactly, um, what exactly can you use? Or like, should we limit ourselves to kind of resolve the ID from the thread? Would the users be using something else? They might. Um, yeah, so that's where I'm, I'm stuck anyway. But I, um, I think the get should stay in the, in the interface. I don't really see any sort of value in abstracting them and, and, I don't know, and taking that out and letting them deal with it um, in a more chaotic manner. I think this kind of keeps the interface together and it makes more sense that, so we have this operation with these arguments that you use to take a state machine and give it to us. And then you have these other functions which <laughs> where we give you a state machine uh, and you just put it back or put it wherever you want. And I think it's like this kind of mirror, uh, mirror-like, um, behavior is easier to grasp than, yeah, we just deal with uh, putting your state machine somewhere. Yeah, I mean, the, the asymmet like, uh, asymmetricity, asymmetricity? The asymmetry, uh, yeah, the asymmetry. Yeah, asymmetry of my suggestion is something I'm aware of I, and I don't like at the same time, at the same time, it, you know, I have counter arguments for the for the SSSE solution, and especially with the like, you know, I, I call it the efficiency, I call it like efficiency concern. But I just really find it a little bit like, I don't know, code code smell, like conceptual code smell. Like you load up the state machine, and like for sure you have the idea of it. You could just save it directly at. Uh, Instead, you like. Uh, what do you mean? I really, I really don't kind of get because it. Because what what I mean is that, oh here, um, what I mean is that when you're writing this, and let's say you decide that, uh, you know, let's say that you decide that this ID. If for you based on your context of calling handlers that for you the id argument actually means threat id because okay because i think, I, think I got it so you're basically saying that once you generate the new state of the state machine you should be having its id by then so then you can just put it back because it's technically linked to whatever else needs to happen like to, to whatever else it needs to be linked to like the thread id i i, I think so but but my um, point, you know so, sorry just, just one thing so like you know once you decide once you kind of come you kind of start with the get method and here you commit to something you decide like okay the id is gonna be um it's gonna be thread ID actually, what, what, what this means for me based on how I'm calling the handlers. And then it also means that the same definition applies to all of these. So mm -hmm. this is also message, you know, thread ID, this is also thread ID. So then when you're gonna be storing the state machine, you need to, when you're gonna implement this, you need to keep that in mind. You actually have to, even though you actually have the state machine with some primary ID on it, you will end up have you will end up having to write uh, update, which will you know involve joining, and it's just unnecessary. It's, you didn't have to do it. You have the ID, and it's kind of more complicated. I mean, I wish I could just as a as a implementer, you know, I wish I could just write like uh, uh, you know s s s uh, like. Select well, ID and I'm not joining to table. You're actually right. So, but this is what I was aiming to solve in the beginning, and which I'm probably going back to in terms of having some sort of ID resolver, because then, mm -hmm. um, like the the point of uh, the entire thing was to kind of have a mechanism to um, sort of determine the ID. 
or we could even just split these things apart. I don't know, but mm. like have some arguments for retrieving the state machine and some, and just the ID or whatever, like a, a bare bones string or ID, whatever associated type, but something simple, like you said, just the primary key in the database that could be used. Um, so then you wouldn't have this um, separation between like you wouldn't have to do that join when you update the state machine. Um, I wouldn't necessarily be that concerned about that, but it's a fair point. Um, yeah, so I'm not saying this is perfect, but I'm, I definitely don't think taking the get out is the way to go. If anything, that's probably gonna create more confusion. I think we kind of need a mechanism to determine, to, to have this ID resolution, like the state machine ID resolution. So then based on some input, maybe the message, um, maybe some other stuff, we can even generate the ID on demand when we need to put a state machine into storage. And we can also use it to, I don't know, maybe, maybe do a direct retrieve, um, you know, like a direct get, such as the one that's there to use the thread ID to a join get the state machine, or maybe also just, uh, like I said, generate the ID for a put operation. Um, and then when you wanna do the store operations, you just use the ID directly in the state machine instead of going through hoops. But then the, the thing with that is, um, it, it still kind of boils down to the fact that if you have this linking, for instance, between thread IDs and state machine IDs, when you put a new state machine in, you need, to insert it, you know, you need to insert the record in that thread ID mapping too, because otherwise you, you have your state machine somewhere in the database, but it's in limbo and you cannot find it. So that's what I don't really get. Like you cannot be completely agnostic, I guess. Maybe there, we could have a separate operation for that, you know, like, um, put new state machine, you know? So it's a specific operation for a state machine that's like, I don't know, sort of a beginning of a protocol, something that's not expected to be there right now. Um, and maybe, yeah, separate the put new state and split into something like put new state machine and put, um, I don't know, update state machine or something. Well, when you create state machine, you don't always have the thread ID yet, technically. You can kind of assume it, but usually you create a message. This, this thread ID thing is also kind of bothering me because, I mean, I, it's uh, probably the best way to go about identifying things in like states and protocols and state machines. But for instance, it's also a matter of how the rest of these things would look like, because right now the thread ID is stored in the state machines themselves, which is not really the way to go because mm, these threads are technically meant to be somewhat controlled from the outside in some manner. Um, and the reason this has been flying in Aries VCX up until now is because we really just use the thread ID and sometimes the parent thread ID, but there is also these other fields um, which you cannot keep track of, like the sender order and the received orders, you cannot keep track from a single instance of a protocol, um, especially considering that these are technically meant, like the threading are also meant to, and the threads are also meant to kind of keep track of conversations between more than two parties. So it's also a matter of that. That's why I'm kind of trying to generalize over this from that regard as well, not just getting this done and okay, take the state machine, put it in there. But I was also kind of just trying to take it one step at a time. Mm. Because when you factor in the, the idea of some external component handling the threading or just I don't know, dealing with that um, and the, the inner workings of that, then it gets way Harrier and yeah. I don't know, that's why I was saying that the, honestly, I'm still, I still stand by that, that the best thing to do is 
would be to kind of devote uh, a good amount, a good chunk of time to develop or design some architecture, lay things out, and then start finding patterns between these things because it is just messy. And the POC uh, is just that, it's a POC. And mm. I'm, I'm not sure if um, we might be able to fix the problems that are currently here and maybe the things that you don't like and that I don't like and that George doesn't like maybe, I don't know, but I'm still somewhat certain that stuff will be left out in the bigger scheme of things. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So so what's your like action step uh, suggestion? Uh, do you suggest to like, like further just like kind of proceed with this POC and like kind of you know work things out fi find out what we are missing and you know keep on iterating it as as we've been uh or you know what approach would you would you take here I don't know I think we could probably get something working out of this but it would by no means be final um but I think as just serving as some sort of example, it might be nice. And it's also a matter of, um, for instance, in, in message processing, um, I think I just pushed some, some commit. I've been working on this where the, uh, another interface is kind of introduced something called a message handler. And that basically just incorporates all the handling operations that were there previously and the thing is that this is a trait you can actually look through the code if you want it might make more sense mm -hmm. um and the, the thing is that this is a trait where there are some methods that have to be set but the handling operations are actually default and have default implementations in the trait so i was thinking kind of exploring the idea that if we make these if we make small methods, you know, reusable pieces that consumers could even overwrite on demand, you know, because mm -hmm. when you implement a trait, you can overwrite the default methods or the methods that have a def default implementation. So then you could actually end up with um, kind of this ability of letting them construct things or maybe, um, I don't know, customize things, but also have the operations done in an organized manner. But yeah, as I was saying, I was kind of getting stuck on this uh, whole thing with the ID um, and especially like inserting a new state machine and the, the resolution of an ID in that mm. case. Mm. Uh, maybe uh, just uh, since, since we talked a lot, uh, George, do you have any inputs on the, the discussion so far and thoughts? comment or nine and even if you guys have something to share um i've mostly just been listening to be honest <laughs> it was a very detailed conversation um yeah i need to have another look at this pr i think sure sure uh all right and then Yeah. Uh, I'm not really familiar with this slide, so I have to know. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's all good, of course. Um, yeah. So where we do? Where did we stop? Book done. Uh, uh, yeah, you actually wanted to show me uh, some 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 sort of trait or something in the code, and we have six more minutes. So what's it? yeah, I think it's in the it's in the new protocols mod RS mm -hmm. file mm, lower the last mod file there. Yeah, and if you scroll down, I think it should be there somewhere. Yeah, so under there you go, the message handler. It's at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I mean, don't. Uh, I don't be too harsh on it. It's just a, an mm. idea. But mm -hmm. The whole thing was, or the whole concept was to have smaller pieces, smaller rewritable pieces. I kind of think that this would end up being 
too big of a trade maybe i mean users wouldn't have to override all or implement all these things but um yeah maybe splitting them on a per protocol basis might not be a bad idea either mm. nevertheless um it's basically the exact same thing as the handlers, just that it makes like when you incorporate the ledger and the wallet and all the other stuff there, um, it makes things a bit more uh, streamlined and also in terms of like function signatures, because you would be passing this in uh, anyway. So this way you can actually use the self fields. Um, yeah, and it's basically just using default implementations for the for the handling operations. And technically users could override that. That's pretty much the idea. Mm. All right, let's let's leave this uh let's leave this out for now. Uh, we are running out of time a little bit. So I think uh, we can like continue discussion on GitHub and, and other channels. Uh let's just get back to the agenda and like wrap it up a little by little um now i don't know how to go back i don't think we had anything else actually much um yeah so yeah that that's actually it and we have two minutes left uh yeah, I, I don't think there's anything new here. Um, maybe just one question, Bogdan. You 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 mentioned before that you started kind of looking into the uh, Anon Creds uh, RS in parallel with some, mm, yeah. some improvements. Sorry, it, that you started like uh, looking into the improvements, which could be uh, or, or start working on some uh, Anon Creds. Uh, yeah, maybe just yeah. high-level stuff for now. I'm just kind of fixing some function signatures and maybe removing dummy arguments, like we're we're too big of arguments to to functions. But like actually making some drastic change would involve a lot of work. Mm. Um, I don't know if this is necessarily the place to discuss that. So, and we're kind of out of time. So, right, yeah. we can leave it for another time. Okay. Uh, well. I guess that being said, we can uh, just wrap it up unless any of you folks have anything else to uh, add in the last minute. Not for me. Uh, uh, I have something about tomorrow. Uh -huh. Uh, is it possible to maybe have an earlier time for the Friday meeting? Maybe we can discuss this on Slack. Like, later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we can uh, set up some time uh, as, as you would like. We can definitely make it a bit earlier if you prefer that. So. Yeah, let, let's take uh, let's take this to Slack, but it should be fine. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining in. Uh, have a great rest of the week. Cheers. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. You too. See you guys.